Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> It's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. We are starting summer of guests a little early this season. Um, due to, of course, the whole pandemic going on, we want to give you content to be entertained. Last week, we had the absolute um, pleasure with sitting down with uh, Samantha, who plays Scary Mary at Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. This week, we have the extreme pleasure of sitting down with Brad, and Brad plays the captain over at Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Um, Brad, how you doing, man? I'm great. How are you guys? We are, we are getting through, man. I'm here in California. Sammy's out in Arizona, so we're getting through. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm here in Georgia. Yeah. Where we're, uh, we're across the whole country. There we go. We got a little bit of yeah. everything going on. I'm glad Sammy has a blank everywhere across the country because I saw uh, Sam's last week and I was like, she has cool pictures. I got nothing. So <laughs> thank, thank you, Sammy. <laughs> oh, no, I no. mean, it's only because I'm on the. I, I'm I'm not at home. Um, I'm I'm staying with my sister during this uh, pandemic because it's probably the best thing to do. Um, so otherwise, I would probably have something in the background, but you know. I did it for you, Brad, to be honest. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm glad we can make uh, Anthony stand out by himself. <laughs> uh, I I have to talk to you about this Captain character, man, because – so <laughs> l- let's go back a little bit. Uh, we, yeah. we, Me and Sammy were introduced to the character – Sammy was introduced to the character last year at Midsummer Scream. I was introduced to the character in 2018. Uh, so I'm relatively new to this, uh, to the whole Queen Mary experience. The first year I actually finally attended Dark Harbor was last year, and I'm so mad that I didn't come sooner because it is such a beautiful event um, that we loved, uh, enjoyed, I, at least I enjoyed every moment of it. Um, so the first time we were introduced to you was, of course, uh, Midsummer Scream 2018. I knew immediately, I was like, okay. If this character is anything like how, what I just saw on that stage, like I, you got me sold. I mean, I don't even have to see the rest of the event. The captain itself just sold me just to come to this event. So that's so nice of you to say. <laughs> that is, it is, it is just fun watching you work. I mean, how cool is it to show up to work and you can kind of really just speak your mind? Really, that's like really cool. It's uh, honestly the the fact that you said that you you know 2018 was your first year. Um, the the captain has has evolved. I mean, all the characters have evolved over the years. Um, so I would say only in the last three years have I kind of found the captain's voice, uh, as it were. Um, and every year I kind of push the boundaries of what I can and can't do. <laughs> and, and until someone says, mm, "I think you went a bit too far there," I'll just <laughs> yeah, I'm always surprised every year of really they let me say that. Oh, okay, <laughs> we'll just keep going. I'm so how long have you been doing the Captain 4? Uh, since Dark Harbor began, 2012 was the first year of Dark Harbor. Before that, it was um, – well, it was still – sorry, it was still Dark Harbor before that, but uh, they had different lead characters. So for two years, um, the lead character was Bundara, um, who was actually my wife. Uh, nice. And then 2012, they changed all the lead characters. That was the first year that I came on board. And then – uh, my wife was the OG Graceful Gale for oh. five, five years, six years. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think it's something about this event, and I, and I said it last the last time we, when we talked with Sam. I mean, it's just something about this event that is unique to other haunts. I mean, other haunts you see, you know, it's of course, you know, you got your standard, of course, your mazes, and you know, you know, the theme park with Dark Harbor. I think what's so interesting about this event is not only does you know, you got mazes on the boat, and you got this whole backstory with the boat, and they really take a lot of the history from the boat. But of course, you know, Dark Heart or you know, Queen Mary itself is famous for the, of course, its its paranormal side, and they really yeah. try to bring that to life during Dark Harbor, which I think is really cool. I mean, you see a lot of these events, you know, they focus around like vampires, or if you look at a, a place like Hornites, you know, they do like uh, intellectual properties and and all that. With Dark Harbor, they really change the game and and focus more on the history and lore of the boat. Rather than you know, let's put in some werewolves or make you know ghosts or whatever. I mean, they have like these really they have really 
like twisted and sadistic stories that they've they found and they just twisted them and made them even scarier, which I love. Yeah, absolutely. And and then that's the funny thing is uh, originally when it was Bundara and her sisters, that was all a, a made up story. Yeah. Um, and then the the genius of it from from them was to suddenly go away. Why don't we just make characters that are actual ghosts on board the ship? Yeah. Um, and that's so much scarier for people. Oh yeah, definitely. It's like, oh yeah, we're playing the characters, but they're actually in there. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> have fun. So with that. so if you see a, an actual like a, a ghost of of my character, it might not be me. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I say to people, you know, um, uh, our, our monsters aren't allowed to touch you. So if someone touches you, it's not us. It's, it's got to be us. someone yeah. else on the boat. Definitely. Definitely. Um, how, has the, how, how has the captain evolved? You, you mentioned it a little bit, but as you've uh, progressed over these last few years, how has the captain evolved? So originally, I, the first year of the captain was I was the only lead character out on the streets. Um, all the other characters, there were five at the time, uh, they were all in their mazes. And so I was the only one out on the street and they weren't really sure. I, I remember saying, well, what does the captain do? And they went, oh, we don't know. <laughs> just <laughs> stand, out, stand out the street and then you're kind of like a tour guide. You're just pointing out people saying, yeah, this is, you know, uh, this is where the bathrooms are. This is, you know, just <laughs> talk to people. And so for the first year, I... I I uh, had never done a haunt like that before, such a big sort of theme park event. And I found myself a spotlight and just kind of stood there as like a statue scare for eight hours. I never took a break. I just stood there and people would come up and take photos and um, think that I was a prop. And then you just do that s statue scare. And I kind of created a rod for my own back because it means that you're inviting people to come up and get close to you. Uh, and, you know, people get very grabby when they think you're just a statue. And so the second year I was like, you know what, I can't, I can't do that anymore. That's, that was rough. So uh, I remember I, after we opened the gates, I would just stand up on top of the gates and like, I'm not coming down for any of you guys. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to do my captain thing from up there. And people would walk in and, and be like, you suck. The captain lost you were so much better. And I'm like, I'm the same guy. <laughs> I just don't want to be down there with you. Uh, and then it wasn't until probably, um, Midsummer Scream, I think it was 2017, was the first one that I did uh, as the captain. And that was the year we introduced the Iron Master. And uh, they just kind of let me loose on stage that year. And I think that's kind of where the captain found his voice. Um, of just like, oh, cool. Let's let's just perform the heck out of it. And, oh, man. and then we just, we just carried that to the event. Um, and then they, they run with that with you know, I have free reign of the of the whole event, so I can go pretty much wherever I want, as long as it makes sense. I'm, you know, there's no point the captain walking into certain mazes that he wouldn't be in. Um, so Dead Rise for a while there was, I made it kind of my maze when I, you know, for a while there, I'd kind of go, eh, well, let's see what's happening in the maze, and I'd just walk into Dead Rise for a while. Um, and up into RIP, and, and then, of course, people start to come back, uh, which you don't anticipate, but it's it's really lovely to see people come back and go hey i got a photo from you from five years ago and oh, it was man. a first date with my wife and now we're married and i think every year i get asked to officiate a wedding somewhere <laughs> as the captain <laughs> so we haven't done oh, it yet but it'd great. be wonderful to do that is awesome no um and i think that was what was very unique um when i first had an interaction with the captain last season um I remember it clearly. We had just come out of um, what was it? I think it was B three forty, and you were standing outside. You know, everybody was surrounding you and everything. I was filming you, and you looked at me like, kind of like, why is this guy filming me? You know, like kind of with that that captain, that that captain attitude we all know and love. And uh, <laughs> you're like, uh, so have you been scared yet? And I'm like, well, not yet. He goes, he, you were like, have you been in any mazes yet? And I'm like, we've been in a couple. And he goes, and you're not dead yet. And I'm like, uh, you know what? I wish I kind of was now, but you know, <laughs> um, it was just one of those interactions that we had with the captain. I was just fanboying out because I had seen you at Midsummer Scream. I had loved the captain's character so much, and to to actually interact with you at the event was just uh, kind of like those fanboy moments. You know what I mean? Like they say, never meet your that's heroes, so cool. but uh, I, I disagree <laughs> with that. <laughs> oh man, I that's so sweet with that. you to say.
It's yeah. you know, I, I, it's a it's an interesting thing because being out on the streets, it's very hard to scare people uh, because they can see you coming. It's not like you're in a maze and you can jump scare or anything like that or work out where you can hide. Yeah. Uh, and the the captain himself is not really a, uh, a a jump out and scare you type of guy. So I had to figure out what was his deal and what was what was going to work for that character. And I think just being I've I've surprised myself at, at, at how scared and creeped out people get just by you staring at them and not blinking, yeah. and and they they think it's scary. I'm just literally just zoning out. It's the end of the night. And I'm just <laughs> like yeah, I'm just stare at you for a while because I got nothing. <laughs> like, oh, that's so creepy. It's it's done. Like, You're like yeah. I'm ready for bed, man. Let's get out <laughs> yeah. of here. Yeah, just just don't touch me in my nether regions, and we'll all be good. I'm so move along. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, so switching gears a little bit on this one, what is the what is the biggest difference between you playing someone like Watson at Dark Horizon um, and playing the Captain at uh, Dark Harbor? Uh, th- there's probably more similarities than than differences. Um, when we when we started, when I went down to Florida for Dark Horizon, um, originally for the first two weeks they had. Uh, bloody Ed Watson in the, in the final scene of the maze. And I'd never been a maze monster before, apart from my little half hour stints in dead rise. The beauty of that was I could go, Ooh, this, uh, this crowd's a bit rough. I think I'm going to go back out in the streets. I could leave at any time. Um, a dark horizon. I was in the back of the maze in my one room. Um, and it was a totally different, totally different scare. Uh, and it also a different way to play the character because you can't, you can't chat to people. You, you you want them to move through as quickly as possible and get the scare and and, and move on. Um, I think after the second week, they put me back out onto the streets, and then it was just like you know, Captain Two Point just with a southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's um, cool. So the, the, yeah, the differences weren't 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 that great by the end of it. It was just uh, <laughs> making sure you didn't sort of cross over into your backstory. <laughs> Definitely. No, I, I I remember that was the biggest thing for the 2019 panel for um for Dark Harbor was if the captain was gonna make its way over to Dark Horizon and you were being like kind of tempted into you know by the voodoo priestess to right. hey come with me you know it's like we can we can go together and it's like everybody was like no 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 don't take him from us we're already losing you we can't lose him it's like yeah it's, and, it's, and it's, the the funny thing for me was uh, over the eight eight years of playing the captain. I mean, occasionally over the years, I've had a night off and someone else has filled in. Um, but this was the first time that I was actually leaving the role and handing it to someone else to do yeah. for the remainder of Dark Harbor. And uh, I mean, it couldn't have been anyone better than than Chris. He was absolutely amazing. Um, and so it was It was really nice to know that that the character was in safe hands. And it's it's... It's stupid and silly of how attached you get to something that you've been oh. playing for eight years. And it's like, and I've always said, that I'm I'm not the captain. The captain is is the makeup, and it's whoever is playing the captain is yeah. what it is on that night. Like uh, any one of those talented actors at Dark Harbor could do it. Um, I'm just the I'm just the canvas for them to to paint the face on. You uh no I mean when you say that though I mean I think I think it is just the relationship that the fans have with you specifically playing the captain and I don't doubt in my mind because there's so many talented people that come into these events every single year uh, that pick up these roles and and really adapt that and that was actually something that we talked about with Sam last year I was like how is it like watching Queen or watching Scary Mary kind of adapt and now it's kind of like you have like a spawn of Scary Marys you know what I mean and and yeah. it, it's cool to see kind of that whole transition grow into like the next generation of people who want to come in and do this yeah it really is and that's that's the thing is like no no one can play scary mary like sam so don't try just do just do your own version of it no one will play the captain like me and that's not a bad thing it's just i it's because I've built the character around my personality, so yeah. you do you. You make the captain what, what you want it to be, and definitely, um, and you'll be fine. If if I always say to him, don't don't try and copy what I do, because half the time I don't know what I do. Like, it's, <laughs> it, it's it's so made up that 
Um, and so sometimes they'll, you know, like when Chris came on, they were like, can you write down the, like in script form of the opening of the front gates? And I was like, I have no idea what I say up there. It's <laughs> just comes out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, this is the first time I have to actually think about it. So we'll figure it out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was, it was something special for me this year too, because we got it. We actually got invited for the first night for the media night, which we were extremely thankful for. Um, and we had a great time. We came out, but I loved it so much that I actually came back that Saturday to read to just so cool. check it out again because like yeah. I was like, this is just so cool. Unfortunately, Sammy has yet to um, experience Dark Harbor because I think the night he was gonna go with me to media night, he just got like super sick with like some virus, and he was so disappointed that he gets to miss it. But I promised him this year. Hopefully, this year we get to experience uh, a Queen Mary Dark Harbor. Um, only time will tell with this yeah. whole pandemic. But um, fingers we'll crossed. Yeah, fingers yeah, crossed. Absolutely. We we got to have the captain back, man. We got to have that opening, <laughs> and we got to have all those amazing characters back to to represent the event. Um, which oh, is really yeah. going to get me into this next question because I'm kind of yeah. curious as to what your thoughts were on this. What did you think about the new uh, the Maze Rogue? I I liked it a lot. Um, it was it was so different. Um, I'm not sure at the end of the day it was where quite where they wanted it to be. Um, so, and and it was it was little things like when you walk past the the captain at the helm, yeah. you look kind of look through that window and, and you saw like the waves crashing, and they had this really cool effect of of um, the smoke in there, look, making it look like it was misty. But the yeah. problem was all that smoke sort of went in front of the projector, so then it wouldn't. <laughs> you couldn't get the full effect of the wave yeah. type of thing. So I like every maze, um, you know, it's first, first year and, and they'll end up tweaking it. Um, but I thought it, it was such a cool concept and it was a different backstory for the captain, which I always love to find new ways, new backstories for him because it changes <laughs> so often. I just have to keep remembering what the new backstory is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and also the, the the thing about Rogue that I think a lot of people didn't get was that it wasn't meant to be a scary maze. It was just meant to be chaotic. It's like yeah. the shit going down. People hadn't actually – there were no dead people. There were no ghosts. It was just – it was just chaos. Yeah. And that was that was supposed to be the terrifying part of it. So people were kind of like, well, I wasn't really scared. And I was like, well, it wasn't really the point of it. It was just loud and disorientating and um, – they're just putting and, you in that situation of if you were on board while this was happening, yeah. this would be the situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is t you know, terrifying in its own right, but not how people perceive yeah. when they go to a horn of what terrifying should be. So uh, it'll find its feet. I think all the all the mazes do. Oh, definitely. And, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Every year they always try to they add something or they tweak something. It's all about trial and error every year to see what works and what doesn't work. Go back to the yeah. go back to the table and then you know work on it, put it back out for a second year and see what happens. Yeah, I think my, my biggest problem was that I couldn't go in there because now the dead rise had gone. I was like, it makes no sense for me to walk into Rogue because <laughs> there's no dead people in there. So I was like, oh yeah. man, now I don't get to go into a maze anymore. <laughs> You're like, this is uh this is pre dead captain, so we're gonna, yeah, <laughs> got to kind of exactly. let that story build out. <laughs> yeah. but first world uh, horn problems. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. I love that so much. Um, and I think we'll also... Sorry, we'll, go for it, Tammy. Go for go it. Go for it, Tim. Uh, oh, you're good. I'll go for it. Okay. I've been doing a lot of talking. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, prior to coming to Dark Harbor, did you have, like, scare acting experience? We know you have a tremendous resume over 20 years of acting, but did you have, like, scare acting experience? I... So, I'm, I moved to Los Angeles in 2008, and um, Halloween events uh, are not big in Australia or New Zealand. Um, so I had just spent six years prior to that in New Zealand. And so Halloween was not a, not a real big thing for me. And my first year in LA, I think I arrived in September and some, I had some friends, some active friends who said, Hey, do you want to do a, a Halloween gig in the Hollywood Hills? And I had no idea what I was in for, but I, I went for it. And what it was, it was this multi-billionaire had this massive mansion up in the Hollywood Hills and his assistant uh, had the house across the street. And when I say house, it was another mansion across the street. And this guy, uh, I mean, his his 
it was just one night only, and I think the catering budget was like two hundred thousand dollars for the night. Oh, I think God. I remember David Beckham was there with his kids, and oh, uh, this this guy had a had a train carriage in the um, in the driveway, and it was on pneumatics. So as you sat in the train, it kind of jolted around, and then the train crashed and you got off and you walked through this mansion and every room that they had made into this haunted mansion. It was just insane. Then you went out to the pool and there was a swamp creature that came out of the pool. I just, I had never seen anything like it. And I was the final scare of the night. I had full facial prosthetics. Um, the funny part of that was I was the only person in full facial prosthetics and they hadn't catered for that. So they had this full <laughs> four course meal for all the actors. And I had to stick um, power bars through the little hole in my mouth. <laughs> and eat. Um, so that was that was my first time doing scare acting, um, and then the then it wasn't until two thousand eleven I I met my wife and one of our uh, I wouldn't say our first dates but one, one of the first things I went to with her was was Dark Harbor and she was playing Bundara and I was like what what is this <laughs> this is just, this is wild it's you know this this the ship itself is so impressive when you just you know, walk into the event. Yeah, um, even ten, even ten years later, I still get chills when I get there. Of just this enormity of this ship that's in front yeah. of you, and uh, and yeah, it was. Uh, I saw her as Bandara. I think um, the the talent director David Wally walked me through some some mazes, and the next year I I said to Jen, "Hey, are they auditioning? Because I uh, that would be quite a cool thing to do." And next thing, yeah, David got in touch with me and said, "Do you want to play the captain?" And I said, "Yeah, cool. What's that?" And he went, "I don't know. We'll figure it out." <laughs> I don't know. We're figuring it out. There, and the yeah. rest is history from there, man. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, that's really cool to hear because, like, much like Sam, I mean, Sam told us she really kind of adapted the Scary Mary character as to what it is today. We see that a lot with the captain, too. You adapted that to sort of what it is today in a way. I mean, you kind of were testing boundaries as far as you and the creative team were kind of really just testing the boundaries as to what you guys can get away with and what you guys can do. And I think that's what really – makes me like the captain so much because we live in a world where, you know, a lot of people do get offended very easy now. And it's like, you know, we're seeing a lot of haunts suffer from that. And I mean, you know, one of my favorite shows at Halloween Horror Nights, they did a Bill and Ted uh, show, which was like a parody show. They took that away. Yeah. The hanging last year at not scary farm sadly was its last year. And it's probably due to the fact that of a lot of messing around. I do like with dark Harbor that they keep, going with their routine but they know when to pull back and they know when not to set the boundaries which is perfect right exactly and it is a it is a fine line um and you you do have to you know th there are certain boundaries that you you can't cross and and you're told what those boundaries are um yeah. about what you can comment on and what you can't comment on at the end of the day it's i mean it's just common sense of things yeah. that you can't say to people um as long as you're having fun with them and and I think a lot of it is also making fun of yourself as well. Yeah. Um, I, you know, as the captain, I break the fourth wall all the time of, you know, like a Midsummer Scream. Yeah. Hey, everyone, I'm, I'm not on script anymore. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy I love for them that. to know that there's, there's no, yeah. that there's a script apparently and it's all written and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think as so long as you're, uh, poking as much fun at yourself as you are at other people, um, and you're not being nasty about it. Uh, you just you just having fun. And, I love it, man. I love it. Yeah, that's why we come back every year is because characters like you really bring that event to life, man. Um, so let's let's get on a little bit to some of the funniest stories. Do you have any great like funny stories you as the captain? I mean, I know there's probably been so many over the years, but is there any that really stand out to you that you can share with us? I mean, that are just out there, man. I mean, cause uh, I, I love listening to haunt stories, man. <laughs> the the only time I have ever uh, sworn at a guest and broken character um, was I think it was year two, and I was doing the the statue scare. Yeah. So I'm standing there under the spotlight, and these three guys came up and and stood next to me to take a photo. And I hadn't moved at that point, and I was a bit over it. <laughs> By then, I was like, ah, I'm not even going to engage with them. I'm not, not even going to do the scare. I'll just take the photo and, and be done. And next thing, I felt 
this finger go into my butt. Uh oh. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and I, I I spun around to the guy and I just went, What the fuck are you doing? And he went, I thought you were a statue. And I went, even if I was a statue, that's weird. <laughs> like no one can see you doing it. It's not like I'm standing there and it's like, hey, look at the guy with his finger in my butt. It's like you you can't see my butt from the photo. Why? Why would you stick your finger in there? That's so weird. And then they all kind of laughed and walked away. And I was like, did that just happen? <laughs> why, would, why would you do that? Oh, that, 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 oh my God. I don't know. I, I don't know with yeah. people sometimes. I just don't. Like, is that just something that they're into? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. I mean, so many, I, you know, so many people come up and go, "Hey, can you can you choke me out?" It's like, no, oh. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to do that. <laughs> that's weird. I, just, I think for me, it's just, can you just talk to me? Like that's it. That's all I want. I just like hearing the captain wow. talk. It's just, it's hilarious. It, it, whether he's <laughs> just talking to you, being polite, or he could flip that switch real quick. Like, I just love being around the captain while he's talking to people because it's just you never know what's gonna happen, and and that's what that's that, that's at least my favorite thing of what you do it's just you never know what's going to happen when you're talking with people it's yeah like, and the the funny thing for me is i never know what's going to happen when i'm talking <laughs> to people either. and that's that's the fun part of it um i the great thing is is i mean the, the makeup has always been superb but i've had the same makeup artist for the whole time awesome. uh, uh so you know, Renee, Renee and I have a real bond and, and, and it's almost like as soon as you feel the contacts go in and you feel the prosthetic put on your face, it's so easy just to flip that switch and go, all right, we're on. It's, it's happening. It's go time. I love it. Yep. I love it so much, man. <laughs> do you, do you have a favorite character that you like interacting with? Uh, when my, when my wife was playing Graceful Gale, she was, she was the one, um, that I would interact with most. Uh, the funny thing was, because I was out on the streets, I wouldn't wear a watch, so I had no idea when it was time to end the night. And she would be in the maze um, in Soulmate, and she would basically walk through the whole park, come and find me, and then, because Graceful Girl doesn't speak, so she'd just put her hand out, and then I'd grab her hand, and we'd walk off together. And people were like, that is so cool. And it's like, no, that's just my wife going, hey, come <laughs> <laughs> like oh sweet, um, and now I, I the the ringmaster is always great fun. Uh, whether it was Peggy uh, beforehand or Andrew, they both have such different ways of playing it. Um, and uh, especially when we open the front gate with with Andrew, uh, he he definitely takes it to places that I'm like I don't think we can go there. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I'm just going to leave all that alone and just carry on. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Sam. Sam is so much fun. Uh, she's she's probably the one that antagonizes me the most, and I'm <laughs> usually the one that uh, that gives her the, the the most crap throughout the night whenever I see her. I know, and that's that's the thing I love about again going back to those midsummer screen panels. Like I saw that you know with the ringmaster like the captain was just like really who gave this person a mic can we shut her mic off like seriously like come on <laughs> and and just when uh i think i think it was last year when scary mary would laugh at the captain like you looked at her like what are you laughing at this involves you too like come on you like, know the 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 funny thing with that moment at midsummer scream was the the script had been written that i Adam would, uh, Adam Conger, the, the technical director, would say that, you know, we'd gotten rid of Dead Rise. And in the script, it says the captain attacks Adam and he is held back by Scary Mary and Graceful Gale. So we get to Midsummer Scream. And as I'm saying the line to Adam, so you got rid of Dead Rise, I was like, man, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I should be closer to Adam for this to make sense. Yeah. So I kind of, in my head, I strung out the line as long as possible to give myself time to get over and put Sam between myself and, and Adam. And Adam says his line, yeah, we got rid of Dead Rise. And in my head, I was like, I don't think Sam ever got a copy of the script. <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> 
that she's supposed to hold me back. And I kind of looked at her and was like, she's not moving. So I don't think this is going to happen. <laughs> so again, if you watch the video, I like, I take a step towards Adam and then I take a step back. Cause I was like, ah, Sam's not moving. So <laughs> she doesn't know what she's supposed to do. And it's going to look really stupid if I just charge Adam and no one stops me. I'm just going to have to beat the crap out of him <laughs> and continue on. And thank God David Wally, uh, took it upon himself to stand up and hold me back. And I saw him get up and was like, sweet, now I can move forward. And yeah, Sam's there laughing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, in my head, I was looking at him going, you never read the script, did you? <laughs> <laughs> You're and, like, I was uh, about to make myself look like a fool on stage. You never read I, the script. <laughs> so all of that, all of that was kind of ad-libbed of her laughing and me just giving her crap was like, man, <laughs> the, the, the best things happen when you just kind of, go with whatever's happening on stage i love that so much now i'm gonna have to go back and rewatch my video on that because i think that i do remember <laughs> recording that panel i gotta go back and watch that now i think I, I i think every now and then i'll go back and revisit it just to watch the interactions with everybody because it's just hilarious to see um and i love how you give them shit all the time about oh how many bars are going to be in this maze this year and all that like that's the uh, funniest thing i love that it's you know, it's it's such a it's such a double edged sword that you know we to make money any business. What's the most profitable profitable thing you can do is to is to sell alcohol. I, when we're not a we're not a um, Halloween Horror Nights. We're not a um, not Scary Farm. That is part of a a theme park that is open all year round. So you know, Dark Harbor has to make the most amount of money it can in one month. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, what's the best way to do that is to sell is to sell alcohol, um, but then with that comes the comes everyone criticizing, going, "Man, you got bars everywhere." It's like, well, yeah. what I think that do? was a, that was a parody thing that me and Sammy were doing. We were actually going to work on a home haunt this season, and uh, you know, we just we were we were just parodying in the blueprint. I'm like, we we need to put a secret bar in this room, and I think we need to put a secret <laughs> bar in that room. Maybe with about thirteen bars and want this one little haunt. I think we'll be all right. <laughs> I yep. think that's that's the key to success right there is putting these secret bars in and people getting in them. Let's see what happens. Absolutely. Um, you'll have uh, to you'll have to hand out tokens and you can share our pain of the tokens. Exactly, man. That those tokens are <laughs> legit though, man. I, I think I still have the B three forty one around here and I got to go through the rogue one with my buddies and um I awesome. I kept a uh, I kept a bag of tokens from two oh, nice. years ago that, that I didn't tell them again with midsummer scream last year i didn't tell them that i was going to do the whole token thing and so uh, i literally had it in my pocket and i pulled it out and said to charity uh for that you get a token and i didn't mean for everyone when the panel was finished i looked down there was a whole <laughs> whole bunch of people all standing with their hands out wanting tokens so i was like oh man <laughs> they got all my tokens that i saved <laughs> No, those I think those are cool to like little collectors items though to have, especially like when the maze yeah. leaves eventually. Like you have those little collectors items to really enjoy and kind of a memorabilia kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like I love those things. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those, are cool. um, those are awesome. But uh, but yeah, it, it it does become annoying during the night when people come up to you and they start talking to you and you're like, oh cool, someone wants to have a conversation and then they're just like, so can I have a token? It's like, That's all <laughs> to talk to me about. That's all right, man. I got you. We're going to have full-blown eight-hour conversation when I go Ooh. back. We got this. I'm going to keep you <laughs> occupied for the whole night, brother. We got this. I got no. What else are we going to do? We're going to freaking interview the captain this time, man. <laughs> That's actually one of my dreams, actually, is to get a podcast with all the Queen Mary like characters in character and just have them all on stage just being them. Like I think it would be so chaotic but so funny at the same time. Like that, that Queen Mary, if you're watching, let's make it happen. Yeah, let's do it. I think it's like it's even rare for us to all be in the same photo together. It's it. Yeah. Uh, like every year they try and wrangle us all together and say, "Can we get a group photo?" And it's almost impossible because <laughs> we're we're always off doing something. And yeah. Um. Now they have the 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 uh, freaks a la carte um, at Dark Harbor where they can say, "Hey, we want the captain to take us through a couple of mazes and." Uh, and that kind of thing. So, you know, our, our nights are so busy that it's, it's, yeah, it's really hard to get us all together. Definitely. Definitely. What is your favorite part about being able to play the captain um, on a nightly basis? Uh, my favorite part of each night is the opening of the front gates. It's, um, and it's the moment when 
uh, a to to walk up there because you don't know how many people are on the other side of the gate, and um, some nights it's a it's just packed, and so you walk up the front, and this energy just hits you from this crowd that wants to come in. Um, and just the looks on their faces when all the monsters yell out from behind me uh, is is the coolest thing because uh, it's their realization that oh there's a there's a lot of them on the other side um, and then the 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 best part about playing the captain is is just the fact that I can walk around all night pretty much go where I want to go. Um, I remember saying to to Chris before he took over the role last year. Um, my one piece of advice was to be seen, but be safe. Uh, I said, you know, by, by nine o'clock, the crowd starts to turn a little bit. So that's where you kind of have to position yourself behind barricades, behind, you know, certain things where you like, you still want to interact with people, but you, you also need to keep yourself safe. Um, but some of those interactions, it's just, they go, they go in directions that you're not expecting and sometimes they're just magical moments of of people fanning out and you just forget that there is a fan base of not just Dark Harbor but the the captain himself. Um and one thing I try to do every single night is um in the whole time I've worked there is go up into the RIP lounge and just take a moment to stand there and look over the entire theme park and just yeah. spend a minute just going, man, this is really cool. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, I think I think it's especially if you're a maze monster, it's very it's very hard to to see the big picture of what you're doing because um, just you're stuck in a room. So, and even when you're on the street, sometimes it's if it's one of those unbelievably crowded nights, um, you can get lost in the negativity of just oh, man, there's so many people and everyone's grabbing me. And so sometimes it's good just take that moment and go go up top and look out and go. This is the coolest thing ever. Definitely. <laughs> like, no, I, I, I don't imagine. You probably have those goosebumps right there just looking over at that. Like, wow, this is like, yeah, I, mean, I can only imagine, especially looking down from the Queen Mary. I mean, it's just like, not only is it a historical place, but you're looking down at this event that's like just not only just has grown in the last couple of years, especially going into that 10th anniversary last season. I mean, a, a lot of people now, this event has like really grown and it's it's getting huge more and more every year. So, yeah, no, I, I completely yeah. – that's cool, man. I mean, that you have that feeling and that you feel that way. I mean, because, I mean, you know, I mean, you guys put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this every season, and we we notice it. You know, the fans, you know, us content creators, we notice that every year, and that's why I think we continue to come back is because as much fun as we have going to these events, we can tell as much fun as you guys are having working the events. I mean, I know there's, of course, the nights where, you know – mid-season it gets a little tiring you know it does have an effect yeah. on you because i've heard stories from multiple monsters but i think what keeps everybody going is of course their love for and passion for each event that they work and and the characters they bring to life which we appreciate every time we go i mean it's just one of those things that we love seeing and we love i mean for, and i can speak for me and sammy we love interaction and and when, it's, when it comes down yeah. to that yeah. it's yeah. like it's the best thing for us we yeah. feel like kids and we, and yeah, and, 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 and us too. Like uh, when we get that great interaction with people that um, you can tell the people that are actually there to enjoy the event as a haunt and get what the haunt is about and what you're doing as actors. And yeah. and then, you know, and then there's the people that are just there because they've got nothing better to do on a Friday night. And it doesn't matter how much you try and scare them, they're not going to be scared. And maybe they were dragged there by someone else. And so they're the ones that you – you, you know, you just give a wide berth to and kind of go, well, I'm not going to antagonize them, um, but maybe the person that they're with or, you know, you, every time a group comes through, you've you got to try and pick your target of who you, who you think is the person that's going to most enjoy the Definitely. interaction that you're about to give them. Definitely. And sometimes, so sometimes you're right and sometimes, sometimes you're wrong. And <laughs> Yeah, you see, I guess it's a, a lot of things I've heard too. Is just what might as well you got to know your audience and just kind of have that being aware of yeah what's worth and, the scare and what's not. You know, yeah, yeah. And you also got to know the old Kenny Rogers, uh, know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Um, yeah, know when to walk away. And that's the thing. I've been caught a few times of I'm gonna get this person. They look so scared, and you 
you know, you say something to their face and they're just, they give you nothing. <laughs> and then your ego, your ego takes a huge hit and you're like, no, I'm, I'm going to get this scared. <laughs> and I've learned over the years that if you don't get it the first time, just walk away and, <laughs> and find someone else. Cause otherwise you dig yourself into a very big hole when you start going, no, I must scare them. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's not going to happen. I love it, man. No, uh, I think before we, we continue on any further, I got to give a huge thanks out to um, our friends over at Fractured Compass Productions yeah! uh, for, for really setting this one up, man. Uh, thank A huge shout out to Jackie over there. She gave us the info to contact you. Uh, we love them so much. They do an amazing job on their channel. Um, I love and them. So much I know you're fans of them. I've seen you come out <laughs> in their content. Uh, you actually did a little recording for them on one of their live streams they did one of the, uh, one night, and I that's, thought that was so true. awesome. Um, and for us wanting to get you on the podcast for so long since we went to the event, um, I knew the one person I can uh, count on, of course, to you know to 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 ask the, for the favor was for Jackie to con con uh, connect us together. And so a huge shout out to Fracture Compass. If you guys are yeah. watching, thank you guys so much for making this happen. Um, this has probably been one of our favorite interviews thus far, honestly, because <laughs> I've just I've been enjoying getting to know uh, not only the captain but as a person, Brad. I mean, we you don't get to see that a lot, you know what I mean? Like the behind the scenes of the of the character, which I which I really that's what we try to target over here is like they're not just monsters, they're people too. You know what I mean? Like yeah, exactly. And you so, know what? We, we I think that's part of. Um, part of the interaction that we were talking about is you know what some some people come into the park they've had horrible days you don't know what's going in their lives and the same goes for scare actors you know we can have a bad day but we still got to show up and 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 still be entertaining and sometimes you just don't feel it but you're like got to do it and yeah. uh and and usually as soon as you get that first great interaction with someone you like yeah this is this is why I do it that's right and, yes. and uh, you know it's all good. No, and we thank you guys time and time again, uh, going to these events, bringing them to life to us. Because I don't know, without you guys, channels like ours wouldn't be possible. You know what I mean? We're the ones that are going out to cover these events, and and not only covering them uh, on a professional basis, but enjoying them as fans. Because I mean, I started out before even this channel. I started out going to haunts in like 2008, and it wasn't till 2017 I finally decided to do the channel. Um, and I'm glad that with this channel I've gotten to open up my horizons to other events and I've gotten to see and meet new people and and really watch people commit to their characters and and just overall do an amazing job like if haunt season had an academy award like I think you would probably win the best actor award like every single year man like it's just that simple. uh man I appreciate that that's that's really cool of you to say and to be honest I think it works both ways you know we we wouldn't exist without without people like yourself um supporting us and uh what's been interesting to me is over the 10 years um or the eight years that I've been doing it I remember you know media night used to be uh radio um and you know television stations and it was cool to do the media um as always but you know they were just reporters coming out and and uh maybe weren't horror fans maybe weren't haunt fans and it's really evolved over the last few years that media night now is a lot of um youtubers podcasters influential um uh, influencers and and they're they're real fans and yeah. it's uh, it it's really cool because yeah. there's nothing there's nothing better than being I don't want to say interviewed because it's it's more than an interview it's just having a chat with people that that get it get what you do yeah. and are not just um, you know I'm not just promoting their channel or promoting themselves uh, as as TV stations can sometimes do hey next up we got this it's just yeah. people that are just like just it's so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, and I think over here, at least on the Nights of Horror, we owe it big time to Queen Mary for giving us that opportunity to be kind of our first ever like media event that we ever got invited to, which was such an, an honor. And uh, it was just really cool when I got that email saying that we got invited out to, to, to actually come and, and experience all that. And I could not be more thankful. And I think that's why Queen Mary will always have a special place in my heart because they gave us they gave the little guys an opportunity when no one else would really. You know what I mean? And um, I think that's and that, why that goes yeah. that that what you just said is absolutely 
uh, right? And absolutely the way Queen Mary works, not just for media, about giving the little guys a chance. That goes yeah. for the actors. That goes for everyone. They're so supportive. Um, and they give you such a such a long rope to explore a character and, and have fun with it and see where you go with it. And, yeah. I mean, they'll be the first ones to step in and go, hey, I think you've, you know, that's not going to work or that's whatever. But they also just let you play. And half of the characters we have wouldn't be what they are without uh, Queen Mary and, and all the producers and talent directors, stage managers, just letting you explore yeah. and, uh, and, and seeing where certain characters go some uh, the best part for me is, is seeing each year um one of the actors will come in and just go hey i want to do this character this year and they'll just create a character and they'll just go sure let, let's let's do it um oceana uh is one that and they just turn into something that no one could have imagined and yeah, it's just funny. it's it's magical that they just let us do that yeah that's awesome no i've always liked events uh, like that, like even knots too, and 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 you know the you know you see a lot of these events who give people the creative freedom to really do that, and I think that's really awesome because um, what's the worst they can say? No, that's like the worst they can say is no, honestly. Yeah. And like, and if it's a no, it's like okay, maybe it was not meant for this year. I'll try yep. again next year, but I still want to be part of the event. Let me just be another character for this year. You know what I mean? So it's like it's one of those never give up kind of situations where it's like okay. Maybe it doesn't fit this year. Let's try next year, but I still want to be a part of this event. You know what I mean? So, Absolutely. I um, No, I, I really speaks, thank you guys. That speaks volumes to the fact that, you know, a, a lot of us uh, continue to work with with uh, our talent director, David, um, yeah. and my co-to at events outside of, uh, of the Halloween haunt. Um, you know, some of us have done Westworld with him and, and Game of Thrones and nice. – uh, and Blade Runner and things like that, that and it's awesome. I think that's that's I think that's part of the reason why Dark Harbor works because it really is a, a family um, we don't just come together for, for haunt season yeah. uh, a lot of us see each other outside of that as well working at different events um, which strengthens our bond but it also strengthens the characters when we come back to Dark Harbor there's more yeah. there's more inside jokes and things that we can play around with definitely no definitely all right Sammy You've been sitting there for a little bit, and I feel bad. No, yeah, I was gonna interject. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like cutting people off. Uh, I, I enjoy hearing people talk. Uh, what is? Do you have like an all-time favorite scare that you've ever had over your eight years of being the captain? Ah, uh, man. Um, there, there was one. I don't want to. It's kind of my favorite, but the person got injured, which sucked. Uh -oh. <laughs> the, there's always there's always people that come through a maze and you think why why are you acting like that cuz you're going to get hurt if you get scared and so there was a couple that walked through and uh, the girl was in front and the guy was behind her and they're kind of hugging each other trying to walk together and I was like yeah. man that looks really awkward <laughs> and, <laughs> and in my head I was like if I scare them they that you know they could get injured the way they're not really balanced with what they're doing. And I went for it anyway. And yeah, sure enough, they, they hit the ground and I think she twisted her ankle. Oh. <laughs> and I, I actually went up and apologized to them in the uh, medic tent. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm just doing my job. <laughs> You're like, hey man, I didn't mean to do it. Stuff. I'm sorry. It's always, it's always the people that, uh, the most pleasure I get is actually being the assist to a scare. Uh, especially in the back of Dead Rise, um, because I know that the guys are waiting for them at the end when they come out. Um, so most of my night, especially walking through the streets, is just playing the assist, playing the distraction, um, especially for the sliders as well, is yeah. is trying to get people to focus on me, which isn't hard to do because they're just like, hey, there's the captain. And it's like, cool, yeah. well, keep looking at me, keep looking at me, keep looking at me. You can't <laughs> see that. And, <laughs> That's that's actually more fun for me is watching someone else scare them. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Um, I think one of the last questions I would love to to always it's something we always ask a lot of our guests um, because usually this is the hardest question for a lot of our guests. Um, mm -hmm. Ironically, uh, let's see how it does with you. Um, what's your favorite scary movie? Oh man, you know what I. 
I like the psychological stuff. Okay. Um, so seven has always oh, been my favorite. Classic right there, man. I because love it. it we just, just, I was just watching it with my dad the other day and it was oh my god. And I think I think that's where a lot of the captain comes from is is not the obvious scare. It's just kind of messing with your mind. Yeah. Where you walk away and go, wait, <laughs> what wait, was what? That? <laughs> that was awkward and and weird. Um and yeah, because because people will try and you know they might be taking video or, or, or something of me, and they'll you, you can see that they're getting scared already, and then I'll just yeah. take it to the nth degree and just trying to mess with them, and that's what that movie did to me. I was like, I, at the end of it, where Kevin Spacey's sitting in the back of the police car and he's doing his big speech, and in your yeah. head you're kind of like, man, he's got a point, and then you're like, yep. wait, what? No, I I I just agreed with the serial killer. <laughs> that, that's just not right. I love so yeah, that. no, that movie, that movie is great, especially that one scene where he gets revealed as a killer and he's like detective, just yelling in the freaking. Oh my god, that oh, scene gets me every man. time. It just yeah. But yeah, that no, that's a good one. I haven't heard seven, and yeah, 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 ironically, it's been on TV a lot, and me and my dad have been watching it a lot. It's one of my dad's favorite movies, and yeah. uh, sitting down and watching it with him, it's just like I was pointing out stuff like he's like Brad Pitt always acts so stupid, you know, a hothead in this, and and you know. Um, freaking um, Morgan Freeman's like nice and calm. I'm like, yeah, Dad, they did that on purpose because that's how they wanted you to notice the characters. That's how they wrote them. They wrote them like that on yeah. purpose. <laughs> he's got to he's got to show wrath at the end, otherwise, yeah, it, it, yeah, it falls apart. Yeah, definitely. Well, Mr. Brad Hills, it has been a truly a pleasure. Yeah. Truly a pleasure, a pleasure to to have you on the show to talk about the captain. Uh, likewise, talk about yeah. It, it we can't wait to eventually see you down the road at Dark Harbor again. Um, sadly, no Midsummer Scream this year, um, which is a bummer for all of us. But we all know why, so we respect the decision. But we know they'll be back bigger and better next year for 2021, um, and we hope to yep. see you at the uh, Queen Mary panel if they decide they, to do one in 2021, which I hope they will. Um, Absolutely. And, and for the record, can't... I know uh, I've been seeing myself a lot of rumors out there that, you know, Dark Harbor's not coming back this year. No one knows right now. So yeah, <laughs> no, that is exactly points. why it's and like, I've talked to a lot of Queen Mary you know. people about it. That is exactly why we haven't made a video on it or anything because we don't want to make something about strictly rumors before the actual company comes out and says something you know what i mean yeah. until they say something then we'll make content around it i have my own opinion about it but i'm only going to share it behind the curtain um as far as to what i yeah. think and exactly. and it's like again until dark harbor or queen mary themselves come out and say something nothing's official yet um and i know there's a lot of people that have been breaking down a lot of facts and statistics behind the company who actually owns queen mary but until they come out and say queen mary I, or dark harbor is canceled Nothing's official yet, so no, no, definitely I mean, not. And I, we and we, we all still of... have our fingers crossed, and yeah. we all hope that they find a way to, uh, to to work with. I mean, who knows what the what the environment's going to be like in in October? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the difficulty with any of these events is you kind of have to start planning now. Uh, so uh, who who knows? We'll just. I we, can say this: we'll if open. open. If things get, you know, if things are the same like they are right now, I think the worst that's going to happen to the event for this year, at least, will it just be canceled just due to the fact of COVID, you know? But that's we're not, we're not, we're not hoping that happens. We want the event to happen, but that's the worst yeah. thing that will happen is, you know, and that, that will probably go with a lot of haunts. That the worst thing that happens is they cancel some of the haunts. We're praying to God that doesn't happen because that's our that's our favorite season. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and worst case scenario. Um, I'll just hand out tokens to people on the street and they can like, they can zoom me. I'll make my own captain makeup and I'll just, I'll just insult them. That's all. Oh, I think, that's a, like... I think, I think you just gave us a video idea to do. So, you know, Brad, <laughs> you keep in contact with me when that comes. We'll do something. There you go. That Absolutely. sounds fun. All right, Brad, thank you so much again um, for coming on the show. It was a show. pleasure, you guys. And we can't Thanks wait so to see you out there at really Dark good. Harbor again. It's going to be, Awesome to see you come back as the captain, um, ladies and, and gentlemen. Yeah, that hopefully, is, you can also make it to uh, to Dark Horizon as well. I'd love that to is, see that too. That is the goal one year to actually go out there and, and do all the Orlando stuff. We really want to do that very much. Perfect. Uh, 
very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching the Mindless Horror Podcast, The Road to 100, episode 98. We are so close to 100 episodes, and that is all thanks to you guys. Follow us on Instagram, at the Knights of Horror, on Twitter, Knights of Horror. Subscribe, hit that bell notification to be aware every time we put up a new video. I'm loving Brad's enthusiasm. I need, I need, I think I need to have uh, Brad as a hype man, man. I mean, he's just, he's, he's there, man. Yes. I love it. I even do it as the captain. Just oh, oh subscribe, or I yeah. will find you. There, we got a little captain before the <laughs> thing ended. You guys got a little surprise at the end. So, uh, thank you guys so much, and we will see you guys next week. Peace.